Alright, so in the last video I promised that we would talk about uh, Fourier analysis, um, an example of Fourier analysis using the fast Fourier transform to identify the frequency content uh, in a signal. And I, uh, I, I decided to use an example from the book because uh, that way you can follow along and have the same, uh, the same data and the, and the book uh, looks a lot similar. So I went out and found uh, found the data that, that they reference in the book. Uh, so this is on page 567 uh, and 568 if you, if, you, uh, if you wanted to know. And, and what it is is it's data for uh, the spun spot number versus the year and this is data that goes all the way back to the year 1700. So from 1700 all the way to, to 2009, at least that's how, that's how far uh, my, dis my data set goes that I downloaded. And uh, if we look here, at this is plotted out, so I just went to MATLAB and I loaded this data in, so I downloaded this data as a file and I loaded the data in and then I just uh, plotted the, the, the year versus the number um, and this is what I get. Uh, so you can see this is a nice uh, periodic function. We have it going up and down and we want to know what frequency content is in this signal. What is the frequency? How far apart? Uh, are these things right? So uh, anyway, so so we want to figure that out, and what we can do then uh, is is use the fast Fourier transform. And uh, so okay, so here's the file that I wrote. The first thing is uh, you load in the the data. So this is just what I called the data file that I downloaded. Uh, the next thing you do, so I named uh, the year. Uh, that was the that was the first column was the year and the second column was the number. Okay, so then we do uh, the FFT on the number. Um, all right, so that's great. We throw away the first data point because it sort of causes problems. Uh, and then uh, I, just, I just create this variable n that is equal to the length of y. That's just the length, the, as long as it is. And uh, it turns out when you, when you plot out the power, um, the power spectrum for, for uh, uh, for one of these things, it's symmetric, so we only need half of it, and so we're going to define this variable m uh, is equal to n over 2, and we're just rounding it just to make sure we don't have like a fractional number, and so that's equal to n over 2, and then we compute the power just according to the equation that they give in the book on page, let's see, where was their power equation? Uh, the power equation was given on page um, yeah, uh, uh, equation 19.40 on page 549. Uh, it's just the absolute value. So the absolute value here, uh, what that does is the it takes the magnitude. So it's the square root of this, the sum of the squares of, of the uh, real and the imaginary components of the signal. And we multiply, we square that and multiply it by two. So that's the power. Then we have the Nyquist frequency is half of the half the sampling frequency, and the sampling frequency is one year. Um, uh, so then we just uh, so, so we can come up with the frequency uh, and then the period, and and you probably don't care about all this, but but in the end, uh, wh what we can do then is is plot out the period versus power, and that plot then looks something like this. Uh, if we zoom on just just to uh, to thirty. Uh, we get this nice peak right here at about, I don't know, I mean, so it looks like we sort of have one at 10 and then another one at 11. Uh, and so uh, we can extract that peak with this little, uh, this little find function. You just find where the power is the maximum and then uh, pull, out, pull out the value there. And that just so happens to be, let's switch over here to MATLAB. And let's, uh, what was that equal to the, um, period index. Yeah, so uh, when I computed it on this data that I downloaded, I got 11.07. Uh, when they do the example in the book, they get a slightly different value, but I think they may have uh, different data. They get 10.9 uh, and... I, I don't know because I I don't know what data they were using for sure, but uh, this is the data that I downloaded from uh, from the website that it gives on the bottom of the page. I mean, you can't get it there, but 
um, but you can get it from from NOAA. Uh, you can download this data. So anyway, that's that's the uh, frequency we get out. That's just basically how we do then an application. And so we could have done this to the previous problem uh, and uh, figured out what the frequency of that signal was. Uh, besides the fact that, I mean, we could have just looked at it to figure out what the fr fundamental frequency is, but we could have done it uh, systematically using this uh, discrete Fourier transform, and that would have been um, uh, enabled us to do the entire fit without having any information. So uh, there you go, and that's the example of the fast Fourier transform.